Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about normal distribution. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you uh, already heard about this distribution before, which is also known as bell-shaped curve or Gaussian distribution. So many naturally occurring measurements of random variables such as height, weight, body temperature, blood pressure, glucose concentration, or even the errors of all these measurements are known to follow normal distribution. And this is considered one of the most important distributions in statistics because it is the base distribution from which other statistical distributions are derived. Before we talk about normal distribution in more detail, let's step back to the visualization of data and talk a little bit more about the shape of a distribution. So here is the histogram of hypothetical exam scores we have seen before. Let's imagine that we have millions of data to plot a histogram, even though there is no right or wrong answers in terms of what the optimal number of bins or width of a bin should be. But in general, if you have a large data set, then it's better to divide the entire range into smaller bins. So for example, here we have a histogram of the exam scores with 11 bins. Now let's increase the number of bins to 100 and see what it looks like. So we do this because we can and the data set is large. Now if we increase the number of bins, naturally the width of a bin decreases. As the width of a bin decreases, the histogram looks smoother as you can see, and if we keep dividing the range finer and finer, then it'll look smoother and smoother to the point where the outline of the histogram forms a smooth, continuous curve when the bin size approaches to zero. And then the curve is called a probability density curve. And when the curve has the following features, we call the curve a normal distribution curve. So um, this is a typical shape of normal distribution. And by the way, you should not uh, use the word normal in normal distribution like in everyday sense. So when a distribution is not normal, then it is not an abnormal distribution. I sometimes you know, see or hear people say, uh, the abnormal distribution, which, uh, uh, you know, to mean the opposite of uh, the normal distribution. Well, it is not, you know, exactly the opposite anyway, right? So you should not use the word abnormal, okay? Never ever say that in the context of statistics to refer a data set or distribution that is not normally distributed, okay? I said this. Now, if a distribution is not normal, then it is just a non-normal distribution, or it is some other uh, distribution with a different name, all right? So when descri uh, describing a normal distribution, uh, data scores, you know, values go to the x-axis, and the probability, occurrence, frequency, density, sometimes uh, they say this is a density, go to the y-axis. So as you can see um, from this curve, uh, normal distribution is denser in the center and gradually thinning out to both tail ends from the center, hence the name bell curve. And please note that those two tails never touch uh, the x-axis and they stretch, stretch out to infinity in both directions. And from the mathematical point of view, the normal distribution curve is describing how likely you will see a certain value in a data set. So for example, um, so if you have uh, a data located on the x-axis here, then the likelihood uh, that you will see this data under this normal distribution is found on 
the uh, the normal distribution curve, right? So the height of this um, data set um, to the normal curve determines the likelihood or the probability that you will see the data, right? So if you move to say like here, the center, then the likelihood that you will see this data is actually this much. Okay. And then this is basically the most likely observations uh, you can see under this normal distribution. So because the normal distribution is a symmetry around the center, and that is another feature of normal distribution. So whatever score in the middle is the most likely observations you can have in a data set, assuming your data follow normal distribution, which will be the mean. So what that means is that um, you know, the more typical um, or mediocre values, such as average, um, uh, are concentrated in the middle under a normal distribution. Right? So um, you know, these values are more likely to be observed in a data set. On the other hand, if you just go out to the uh, tail, then that's where you can find more kind of a extreme data, right? So they are kind of a atypical data and you know, the normal distribution. So that is actually represented by the low likelihood, low probability of these data, right? Um, so these are extreme. So if you think about like exam scores, right? So say uh, the usual exam score is 50, right? So that is the kind of center. Then if you just go out to, you know, far away from the mean, say you have like a 90, 100, and you have like a 10, 20, you know, you do not find these um, scores um, quite often compared to the scores close to the mean, right? So that's actually what it means uh, that, um, you know, that the middle scores are more likely to happen, whereas the extreme scores, so the, the scores in the tails are more extreme, and it is not likely that you see those data uh, frequently. So another feature of normal distribution, as I said uh, briefly just before, um, with all the central tendency measures, uh, the three central tendency measure, we've learned uh, mean, median, mode have the same location, which is exactly this, uh, in the center of the normal distribution. And the normal distribution is perfectly symmetric around these three central tendency measure under a normal distribution. And another feature of normal distribution is that you can um, specify or characterize any normal distribution uh, if you know their location parameter and well that is a um, scale parameter the spread parameter which is sigma so here this is actually a lower case of sigma right to remember the big sigma here right and that is the capital uh, and then this is a lower case of the sigma right and we use this uh, um, lower case sigma to represent population standard deviation, right? So here, this is a, this arrow represents spread, the average spread in the normal distribution, which is typically represented by the sigma. And then the mu, this is another Greek letter, mu, right? Uh, representing the location parameter of normal distribution. So that is just, you know, where the center is, right? So that is the mu. So that line is mu, and that is sigma, right? So as long as you know these two quantities, then you can specify the whole normal distribution curve uh, mathematically. So in fact, there is no such thing as like a the, a the normal distribution because, you know, depending upon uh, this mu and sigma, right, there can be infinite number of different normal distribution, 
right? So here we have some, you know, a, a family of normal distributions showing, and the mu uh, is also called the location parameter, I said, right? Because it dictates the horizontal location of the curve, right? So for example, if you look at this blue one, right? So, so this blue curve here is specified. So it has mu, the mu of zero, and the sigma square is 0.2, right? So sigma square is what? It is a standard deviation squared. So this quantity is actually a variance. So sometimes the normal distribution is specified with the mu and the variance or standard deviation. Sometimes it is square, sometimes it is not. But, you know, they just mean the same thing. And see, so the location of the blue curve is actually centered around zero, right? That's where the mean of this normal distribution is. But if we move or change the location parameter to the negative two, then that becomes the green curve, right? Green curve here. And then you can see that the center is actually moved by two to the left. So now the new location is negative two for the green curve. And if you look at the spread parameter, right? The sigma square is 0.5. So it actually increased from 0.2 to 0.5. So it has, the green curve has more parameter, uh, more spread. And that is actually represented by larger, uh, the kind of a fatter graph, right? Compared to the blue one, right? So the location parameter um, determines the location, the horizontal location of the curve, and the spread parameter determines uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the width, width of the curve. Uh, and then we can also have um, the corresponding cumulative normal distributions curve, and the cumulative curve um, has, you know, this kind of a, a characteristic shape uh, looking like an S, right? And, you know, these family of cumulative normal distributions here is actually the corresponding cumulative curve from this uh, family of curve, right? So, and again, uh, mu is the location parameter where it determines the location of cumulative normal distributions too. See, you know, the 50% the of the blue is actually symmetric around the center, which is zero. But if we move the center by two to the left, then the location parameter becomes negative two. And the slope of curve um, for the cumulative normal distribution also uh, is determined by the spread parameter, see, the blue curve is steeper compared to the green one, right? That's because um, the green one has more spread than the blue one. And another important feature of normal distribution is what's called the 6895 99.7 rule that relates the area or proportion under a normal distribution to the uh, standard deviation. So this rule applies to any normal distribution, so you might as well just to remember this. So according to this rule, the area under the curve bound by plus minus one standard deviation. So here the mu again represents the mean of the distribution, right? The center of the distribution. And if you go out to one standard deviation, so sigma here is a standard deviation, right? So mu minus one is the score where um, this is the below, uh, so one standard deviation below the mean and the other score that is located one, stand, one standard deviation above the mean. So when the normal distribution is bound by these two scores, right, then the area under the curve 
is 68%, right? Um, and you can find 95% of the area under the curve within plus minus two standard deviation. So that is pretty much like a most data you will find, I mean, the, the, the most of the proportions under the, um, the distribution. So say, so within plus minus two, so now you move another standard deviation far away from the center. Then the area under the curve bound by these two scores. Now I just shade this. Okay, so that is 95%. Okay. And if you go out further to three standard deviation, okay, so that's uh, three standard deviation below the mean and three standard deviation above the mean. Then this area, green area, will be 99.7%. So this is just a rule. So uh, you want to just remember it. Okay. So then what does this uh, area under the curve mean? Um, that is just a summed probability under the curve. Um, so before I told you that um, the normal distribution um, describes the uh, probability that you will see a certain value, right? So for example, the exact probability that you will find this data under this curve is here. Right, so that is just a single probability for this data set. But when you say the area under the curve, so that you want to calculate the area under the curve from this data to the negative infinity, right? So that means is that this is a summed probability that you will find this data or more extreme because the data to the left here, right? So that all includes all the more extreme data from this data set, right? So that's what that means. So the area under the curve is a summed probability from a certain data point, right? And in this case, because this is in more extreme side, than this data set. So you say the area under the curve in this red represents um, the summed probability that you will find this data set, this data set, as big as this one or more extreme. So that's what it means. And for the same token, this means the same thing. So here, if your data is located here, then the exact probability is just, just find this data under this normal distribution, you can just find here, right? So that is a single probability, but the area under the curve to this direction, right? Represents all, some of all the probabilities, right? All the other extreme values than this one. So that is the area under the curve here. Right, some the probability that you will find this data or more extreme. So that's what it means. So um, if and what's the area under the curve in the middle? Again, that's the sum the probability that you will find between these two data sets. So you add all the probabilities uh, between these two scores. So that's the meaning of area under the curve. And this will become important later on when I um, try to explain 
be a concept of p-values or alpha uh, at the level of significance. Now that we have talked about the um, uh, the proportions or the area under the curve, so let's just go over some problems and applying those um, the rules, right? So here we have a normal distribution. So this big N represents a normal distribution. And this normal distribution um, has the location prime mean of 50 and then standard deviation of 10. So when you are given uh, the, uh, the specification of a normal distribution, then um, what? is the proportion of the blue region here um you know given this uh, normal distribution so that is the question right so if you know the uh, the 68 95 99.7 rules then this question is easy to answer right so this middle proportion so it's just uh, bound by scores 40 and 60 here right we know that the mean is 50, right, the center, and then the standard deviation is 10, and these bounding scores are happen to be one standard deviation. So that's um, so 50 minus 10, right? And then this 60 is one standard deviation above the mean, which is 50 plus 10, right? So now we know that these two bounding scores are the plus minus one standard deviations uh, from the mean, right? And by the rule, we know that the blue region is actually 68%, right? Okay, so here is another question for you. Then, now we have different normal distribution, right? So now the mean is 75 and the standard deviation is 10. So in this case, then what is the proportion of the shaded region with blue? So that is the question. So now we know that the 75 is the mean and you have to you know, find out you know, what are the two bounding values. And it looks like a 55 is one, seven, uh, 95 is another, but this is a lower limit, this is upper limit. So we know that the standard deviation of this, uh, of, of this distribution is a 10, so the 65 is actually one standard deviation below the mean, right? So that is 75 minus 10, and 55 is another one standard deviation from 65. So that is actually 75 minus 20, right? So that is a two standard deviation below the mean. And 95 by the same token, that is actually 75 plus 20, right? So this is a two standard deviation above the mean. So what that means is that these two scores are the scores um, that is the plus minus two uh, standard deviation from the mean. So by the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, the proportion under this curve should be 95%. Okay, now we have a kind of a flipped problem where you're given um, the middle proportion. So you are given the middle 68% and then you're given the, um, the specification of normal distribution here. And the question is to find these two bounding values, right? Contain middle 68% when the normal distribution uh, has a mean of 40 and standard deviation of 5. 
So this is kind of an inverse problem compared to the previous one, right? So now we know that this middle is 68% and by the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, we know that you, we can find the middle 68% within plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, right? So we know that the center is 40, so that is the given mean. And the one standard deviation above the mean will be 40 plus 5, so that's 45, right? And the one standard deviation below the mean is 40 minus 5, so that's 35, right? So the bounding values, the lower limit and the upper limit is 35 and 45 for this question. Right, so within 35 and 45, we know that we can find middle 68% for this distribution, right? So here is another uh, similar question. Now, the middle proportion uh, given to you is 95%, and you need to find out these two bounding scores um, containing the middle 95%. When this distribution has mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 3. Again, the mean is here 20. Now, by the rule, we know that we can find middle 95% within plus or minus 2 standard deviations this time, right? Because one standard deviation is 3. So that's 3, another 3. So plus 3, plus 3. So this becomes 23, and then the two standard deviation, deviations from mean is 26, right? So by the same token, you go two standard deviation below the mean of 20, so that's 17, and that becomes 14. Right? So the answer is 14 and 26 uh, for this distribution, um, you know, the, the two values that you can find the 95% within. Okay, so this question is um, asking to calculate the proportion above seven when the distribution has a mean of 10 and the standard deviation of 3. All right, so, okay, so we have mean here that is 10 and it is one standard deviation is 3, so that's 13 and 7 and so on. And the question is, what is the proportion of the distribution? above so that's this portion right so that is the portion that we need to calculate proportion that we need to calculate so how do we approach this problem then you know so far the previous two questions uh, we're dealing with symmetric proportion right but now this is a bit different and um, so um, all, all we have to know is that, you know, the normal distribution is symmetric around the mean. We know that from here, and this part, the right half is obviously 50%, right? So then all we need to calculate is this portion. So let's just change the color of the pen up. So this area of the curve, right, this proportion, that's all we need. So how do we know, you know, this green proportion then? So we know that this is actually and the center and the one standard deviation below, right? 
and we know that 13 up to here so that green part this is 68 percent right we know that you know between plus minus one standard deviation and the area under the curve um, between these two the plus minus one standard deviation will become 68 percent and the left is just a half of 68 percent right so what is the half of 68 the 34. Okay, so you add 34 plus 50, 84 percent. But that is 84%. The whole proportion above the 7. Given a data set, any raw observation or score can be transformed to what's known as Z-score by subtracting the raw score from the mean of the data set and divide that difference by the standard deviation of the data set. So this process of converting a raw score into a standard score or Z-score is called standardizing. Or sometimes uh, it is called normalizing uh, but uh, sometimes it can be confusing to use normalizing because it can mean something different too. Anyway, um, this way any score can be expressed in terms of how far the score is away from the mean in the unit of standard deviation. So the raw scores above the mean will have a positive standard scores, whereas those below the mean will have negative z scores and so the mean itself then will have a z score of zero so these z scores are typically used for comparison purposes for example you may you may want to know you know where your body weight stands in the population so if you know the population mean and the standard deviation then you can convert your weight into Z-score to see how different you are from the typical population weight, which is the population average weight. And more generally, so if a variable X follows a normal distribution with a mu and a standard deviation of sigma, so here X represents um, any random variable. And this squiggly sign is read follows. So if a random variable X follows, this big N represents um, the normal distribution, okay? And the normal distribution has mean of mu and the standard deviation of sigma, right? So this whole thing on the left <clears throat> is read if a random variable x follows a normal distribution with the mean of mu and the standard deviation then it'll follow a another normal distribution with the mean of zero and the unit standard deviation when every score in that random variable x is standardized by this uh, set transformation or the um, the standardizing process so we can convert any normal distribution into a single standard normal distribution so that's what that means so here is an illustration of how a normal distribution becomes a standard normal distribution after uh, standardization so the distribution in light gray uh, on the left is the original distribution following a normal distribution right with the mean of negative two 
and the variance of 0.5. So this is a variance instead of a standard deviation because the reason um, that will become clear later on. But so that x, so that is the mu of the distribution, and this is sigma squared. Okay, not sigma. I told you already uh, before that sometimes and uh, the normal distribution is specified by either standard deviation or the variance okay so the mean of the light gray distribution is here right and the standard deviation is about um, the spread is about here right that is um, actually square root of 0.5 right standard deviation now, if we follow the set transformation or the uh, standardization using the equation previously, so the x is the, the all the scores of the original distribution in light gray, right? So you plug in all the numbers from the original normal distribution and subtract these scores from the mean of that distribution, right? Which, which is negative two. And you divide this difference by sigma, right? So because in, in this equation, because of the square root, that means this point five here is actually expressed in terms of variance instead of a standard deviation, right? So that's why I uh, told you that this point five is um, <clears throat> variance instead of standard deviation. Now, if uh, the x um, goes through this transformation, then the resulting distribution is in this black um, distribution on the right, which is the standard normal distribution. So now the all the scores are the z scores converted to z scores following the normal distribution of um, with a mean of zero and a unit standard deviation. So <clears throat> any normal distribution can be standardized to follow a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a unit standard deviation. So um, let's work with some example question to illustrate how we can calculate set scores in practice. So let's assume that we know um, the uh, distribution of intracranial pressure in Glasgow region, and this is known to be a normal distribution with a mean of 17 millimeter mercury and a standard deviation of 5 millimeter mercury. Now you measured an intracranial pressure of a patient um, from the clinic. And it turned out to be 27 millimeter mercury. Then what is the Z score for this patient's um, uh, intraocular pressure is the question. So this is a very simple question where you can just plug in the given numbers into that uh, standardization equation. So the equation was Z equals X minus mu and sigma so all you have to do is to plug in the numbers now what is the um, the x so x is the original score that we want to convert into the z score which is patient's intracranial pressure 27 right and then you subtract this from the mean of the population which is 17 and you divide this difference by the standard deviation of the population, which is five. So now the top 10 and that's two, right? So the standard, uh, the standard score of that, you know, patient's intraocular pressure is two, meaning that um, his or her intraocular pressure is actually two standard deviation above the mean, which is considered quite high. So the um, standard normal distribution has all the properties of normal distribution. 
So you remember that the uh, the ninety five percent of the data uh, would fall within plus minus two standard deviation under a normal distribution, right? So um, the exact value, in fact, is one point nine six uh, instead of a two. So um, they just used um, the rounded number to make it simpler. But uh, the exact value is plus minus uh, 1.96. And um, so within these two values, you can find the 95% of the data. And then, um, so these set scores, uh, as I said, um, you know, tell you how far a score is from the mean in the unit of standard deviation. So that said, Z score of 1.96 or two um, after rounding means that the score is actually two standard deviations above the mean whatever the original score is and the sign tells you if the score is below uh, or above uh, the mean and the total area under a z uh, distribution is one um, so when you normalize anything um, then it becomes one uh, any normal distribution, right? Then the area under the curve is just uh, one, and which is just basically hundred percent. And the remaining area in both tail ends, I right, see this um, kind of a reddish area, is two point five percent each, right? Because the middle ninety five percent, then then the remaining tail ends are five percent. Um, you know, by combining these together, so each because the normal distribution is symmetry around the center. So you split that 5% into exact halves to these two tail ends. So for various reasons, um, there has been a need to calculate any areas under the curve. And this can be done using a calculus uh, the integration, right? if you want to do it by hand. And by convention, uh, area under the curve in calculus is always um, calculated from the negative infinity. So from the far left here, right, up to a certain value, Z. Right? So the area under the curve is starting from the left into a certain score, Z. So that's how you, uh, you know, perform the uh, integration in calculus. And to make it easier to find the area under the curve, instead of you know performing this calculus each time, you know what we need to find the specific area under the curve, um, people publish a table of area under the curve like this one, one for the standard normal distribution. Uh, even about like 20, 30 years ago, um, I needed to use this table to find out a specific area under a standard normal distribution but uh, thanks to the uh, current computing power now we can calculate any areas under the curve by a few button clicks even with better precision anyhow the table provides um, the area under the curve up to any z scores of two decimal places ranging from negative 3.49 to positive 3.49 so um, this range, I mean, you can go, you know, further uh, beyond the 3.49, but um, so this table actually provides the area under the curve uh, with a precision of four decimal places, and it pretty much covers all the area under the curve, right? So it becomes just a pretty much one. So they stopped at this range, right? Negative 3.49 to positive 3.49. So the table on the left shows the area under the curve of Z distribution up to any negative scores and any negative Z scores with two decimal places from negative 3.49 up to the halfway zero. On the other hand, the table on the right shows the area under the curve of Z distribution at up to any positive Z scores 
with two decimal places passing the halfway of zero to positive 3.49. So using this table then, let's try to find the area under the curve at z-score of negative 1.96. So we're going to use the left um, table and to find out, you have to find out the z-score of negative 1.96. So the far left column are the, um, is the list of uh, the z-scores uh, with a single decimal places. So you find out negative 1.9 first, going down the column, right? So that is the negative 1.9. Now you can find the remaining, the second decimal places from the other columns. So you're going down to find 0.06. And the area under the curve is where these two, you know, the row and the column meets. So that's 0.025. That's where the uh, the area under the curve at z score of negative 1.96. So as we learned before, right, the left tail. So this is basically the left tail, um, the area under the curve, the left tail um, up to the z score of negative 1.96, which was 0.025, right? So if we go back to this graph, right? So it is the, uh, the left tail area up to the z score of negative 1.96, and it was 0.025, which is 2.5%. And from the table, uh, the number is exactly the same, which is 0 0.025. So this is how you read um, the table to find the area under the curve up to a specific z-score with a two decimal places. Because uh, normal distribution is such an important distribution, people came up with some technical terms to describe uh, distributions breaking the properties of normal distribution. For example, we say a distribution is skewed to the left or right when the symmetry from the center is broken. And this typically happens when there are outliers in the data set, and especially when the outliers are on the right of the um, distribution, then this di distribution uh, has a positive skew or is said skewed to the right. So as we just have seen, um, the distribution is pulled to the right because of the, um, the influence from the outliers, right? On the other hand, um, when the outliers are on the left of the distribution, then this di distribution has a negative skew or is said skewed to the left. And as you can see, um, the distribution is pulled to the left when there are outliers on the left side of the distribution. Another term, kurtosis, is a term to describe the uh, pointiness or tailedness of a distribution. So here is our normal distribution. And when you have more scores close to the center, then the resulting distribution looks fatter compared to the normal distribution. We call this distribution platycurtic, having a negative kurtosis where platy means wide, broad in Greek. And a platycurtic distribution has thinner tails at both ends. On the other hand, a distribution is called a leptocurtic, looking more slender than the normal distribution. And this distribution has positive kurtosis with thicker tails, meaning um, it has more extreme values at both ends than the normal distribution.
So um, this illustration compares the part of box plot to the uh, corresponding normal distribution side by side. And as you can see, the box plot is showing a perfect symmetry around the median for a perfectly normal distribution. So, um, so this first normal distribution is actually showing uh, the corresponding parts of the box plot. So we have Q3 and Q1, which is the IQR, right? And by definition, this IQR contains the 50% in the middle of the data as shown here. And when the length of whisker is 1.5 times IQR, then the upper whisker is actually corresponding to 2.698 sigma standard deviation. And then the lower um, whisker is actually corresponding to the negative 2.698 standard deviation. And up to that, um, you know, boundaries, two boundaries, each contains 24.65%. So if we combine these two together, then it'll become 49.3%, right? Yes. And 49.3% plus 50. So that's 99.3%. And remaining tail ends will only contain 0.7. So each um, will contain 0.035. So 0.7%. So that's 0.035%. Um, so um, in decimal notation, it'll be uh, smaller. And this one, the bottom normal distribution shows the... Um, Basically, the um, the 68%, 95, 99, 0.7% rule, where you can find 68% in the middle within plus minus one standard deviation. And the remaining proportion will be then um, 32%, right? So each contain about 16%. So um, this is the kind of a side-by-side -side comparison between the box plot and the normal distribution. So because normal distribution is perfectly symmetric around the center, the location of all three central tendency measures are the same under the normal distribution, right? However, when the symmetry is violated, right? So in box plot, even, even though this band is median, um, if the distribution, uh, if a distribution is a normal distribution, then it also represents the location of mean and the mode. But you know, when the symmetry is violated, um, in other words, if a distribution is skewed, then the locations of those three central tendency measures start to separate relative to the direction of skewness. So here we have a normal distribution curve on top and the respective box plot representation at the bottom, where Q1, Q2, and Q3 represent uh, corresponding quartiles on each representation. And as we have seen like before, uh, the box plot is also perfectly symmetric around the median, but when there's a um, negative skew, right there, the mean is most affected. So the mean is pulled away uh, from the center to the left, then comes median in the middle, and the mode is on the right. So when you have negative skew, then you have this long tail to the left side, which is represented by the long lower whisker of the box plot. And also the location of the median is not uh, central in the middle of the box, right? And the upper whisker is shortened um, when there is a negative skew. On the other hand, um, the positive skew now will change the position of the mode and mean um, reversed um, with respect to the median. 
So the location of the median is still in the middle of mode and the mean. But then again, mean is most affected. Um, it is really sensitive to the extreme values or outliers in the distribution. So with a positive skew, the mean is pulled away to the right from the center. And it is actually shown by the uh, uh, elongated upper whisker in the box plot and then shortened um, lower whisker in the box plot. And again, the location of the median in the box is off. So the box plot can um, indicate the, um, the violation of symmetry from a distribution.